Hey, how's everyone doing? This is Jerry. I'm going to be sharing some stories I have in my study abroad trip to Japan. So since I spent the whole school year there, I'm going to try to divide it into first semester and second semester. Now, um, for this first story, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of setup. A little bit of setup because I want you guys to kind of understand my mentality going into Japan and how it came to be to get to this story. So like my mentality was um, I'm going to go to Japan and I'm here to learn about you know Japanese culture to speak Japanese basically live the normal life of a Japanese college-age student that's what I want to be able to do so I don't want to rely on English I don't want to uh, be in my comfort zone I have to get out of it and yeah that was my mentality going in so it was kind of um, interesting so um, when I arrived at the university they placed me in um, the dorms called the International House or I House for short and this is where they placed all the foreigners uh, so it was like around 200 300 students uh, it was a lot of students from like all around the world I'm talking Poland Russia Mexico Australia just everywhere and the language we all shared in common was of course English so I mean for a lot of people that could be seen as good because it's like okay I'm not tackling Pan by myself I have other English speakers here with me um, but for me it's kind of like okay this is kind of a hindrance I'm living with these people but it's like I'm trying to immerse myself in the culture Japanese culture and I feel it's very easy to just kind of rely on them so two ways to I guess interact with Japanese students at a university setting would be through classes and clubs or circles as I think they call it so the problem with the classes was I was in Japanese 101 Kanji 101. You know, classes that Japanese students aren't really a take. All my classmates were people from International House, so I was like, okay, next thing to do, join the circle. So, it was a day when all the circles were advertising, and me being a dancer, I wanted to join the dancing circle, and I managed to find a hip hop dance circle, so that was perfect. Like, I joined, it was like 200 Japanese students, I was the only foreigner, no English, this is great, I'm fucked, right? <laughs> so, I'm like, all right. I am really good at immerse myself in this. So I think around um, the third meeting, that's when I went to the meeting area, which was at the gym, and I noticed I was not the only foreigner there. And I was like, crap, the international house people have found the circle and they have joined it as well. It's all good, there's a lot of students there. I'm, I don't really know the international IHOUSE students. I don't really know them, they don't know me. I don't think we really get interact, so it's all good. Besides, as the meetings went on, most of them dropped out of it because joining a circle in Japan involves a lot of commitment. It was a passing interest which is okay but most of them didn't want to join. I think four of them stayed and two of them are really important but before I get into uh, introducing them uh, one more thing on how this circle works. There is um, subgroups within the circle because it's such a big circle. I mean 200 students it's a lot of people. So they divide the group into five subgroups of hip-hop dance, locking dance, breaking, girls hip-hop, and house. So when you join as a first year, you get to pick which one of these genres, these subgroups you want to join. Now me, I pick break. Breaking. These two guys are both from Australia and the first one, his name is Angus. Angus. Yes. Angus B. So yeah, he joined hip hop and the second one, his name is Matt and he joined Breaking with me. I'm just like, ah, I did not think anybody else would join with me because Breaking looks the most intimidating. So we kind of became known as the three foreigners of that club. I mean, there was another two, but one was from Korea and the other from China. So I mean, the Japanese was already down to the point, so they blended in. Okay, so that's basically the setup you guys need to know. The story happens like two, three months after joining the circle and I'm letting you guys know right now this story is probably the proudest moment of my life I mean there are a few things in my life that I consider that I've accomplished something and this is one of them so one thing about this circle is they have a lot of drinking parties and one time they decided to completely run out of bar and have a drinking party there now me I decided you know what I I'm gonna go to this drinking party sure why not and I remember that uh Matt the guy who was uh in the breaking subgroup with me he couldn't join but Angus he did so we went there we arrived there you know everybody was having drinks having a good time we're like hey this is pretty fun anyway so me and him were just talking just having a beer and I had like a ah, 
I don't know what beer size is. It's like a little bit bigger than a pint, but it's like this big mug of beer, right? I have, I don't know, this kind of this tall. Anyway, it, it was full. I think I think it was three fourths full still, because I was just I was just sipping that guy like a little bitch. But <laughs> and Angus, he tells me, hey Jerry, this uh this bar is gonna close in like five minutes. You gotta like chug that guy, otherwise you know that's wasted beer. And you know for for Australians, that's like one of the worst crimes you can commit. I think I was already up there at this point. I don't know. I, I don't know how many drinks I've had, but I was I was definitely up there. I was like, all right, I can chug this beer, no problem. But you have to chant USA while I do it. <laughs> and one of the club members kind of heard what I was saying, but I said it in English, you know, because I'm drunk and I cannot comprehend Japanese at that level. So he asked Angus, who's better at Japanese than I am, he's like, what did Jerry just say? And Angus explained to him, he's like, oh, he's gonna chug the beer, but we have to chant USA while he does it. So I'm just there thinking, okay, two guys are gonna start chanting USA while I chug this beer. So I start downing that guy and not even one second in, I'm hearing this whole bar full of Japanese college students just USA, USA, <laughs> right? So it was the proudest, it was surreal. It was the proudest moment I've had in my life. My stomach was not accepting that beer because I was chugging and it was a lot of beer and my stomach's like, Jerry, calm, your, calm yourself right now. What are you doing? I cannot accept all this beer. So I chugged it, I finished it, I put that mug down and everyone's like, yeah, you know, claps, cheers, pats on the backs and I'm just there like, oh boy. Yeah, my body was not kidding. It did not want to accept that much alcohol. Okay, let's see, what are my options? <laughs> Cause this, this stuff is coming back up. I can see the time limit. So I, I feel it coming back up. I was like, okay, my options are this empty mug right in front of me. I'm fucked right now and I need to get to that bathroom now. Now, thing with this bar, it has one bathroom, one toilet, and the bar is like full of one of the biggest circles in the university. And it's not a big bar, it's kind of a small bar. But safe to say I went to the bathroom and there was someone in there and I'm just like, <laughs> Okay, I have about 30 seconds right now. I have 30 seconds of being able to hold all this beer down. And I do not want to blow chunks in a small bar with a bunch of Japanese students. Here, this is going to leave a bad impression. So, what are what are my options here? I got the empty beer mug in front of me. There's an empty box in that corner right there. Uh, okay, I got to decide, got to decide, got to decide. I, I don't have much time to decide. I was like, okay, I'm grabbing that beer mug. and. Just as I grabbed the beer mug, guys, it's like God himself said, Jerry, you do not deserve this embarrassment. Because I was next to the bathroom with that beer mug in my hand, and I heard the door open. I was like, ho! Oh. And I saw some guy walk out. I ran in, closed the door, and right when that door clicked shut, it was like a sprinkler, man. I was just like, Bleh. Just like all over that bathroom. Okay, after that happened, I was like, okay, I feel better now. This bathroom is a mess, but I made it. I, I made it, guys. I, probably only 20% of those contents made it into the toilet itself, but no one else was there to witness it. I did my best to clean it with toilet paper, but um, I kind of felt bad for the bar owner. But, you know, the important part was I made it. Ended the night on a good note, you know, hugged the beer, got that chance, went home with a smile on my face. Perfect night, and yeah, it was a good story to tell. And I gotta thank Angus for it, because he's the one who translated it for me and got everybody going. But yeah, that guy's awesome. So my second story, uh, this Gosh, these are all drinking stories. Everyone's gonna say Jerry has a drinking problem. But whatever, I mean, they're fun stories. So, my second one takes place on my birthday. Now, remember the, that I told you the mentality I had was not to hang out with international students? Well, I did start getting close to both Angus and Matt by the time my birthday rolled around. And through Facebook, they found out it was my birthday. And they were just like, Jerry, we gotta do something to celebrate. Um, we'll invite everybody at the I House out. And yeah have a good time, right? I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So we went to the same bar that took place for the first story. And it was just uh, me, Angus, Matt, and like two other international students. And we're just, you know, having a good time, having some drinks. And I got back to that level of like, okay, I'm good. I don't need any more drinks. And 
I'm at a good level right now, right? I got to that point. And also the bar was closing, so we're like, okay, it's time to leave. So Matt suggested the night's not over. We can go to a 24 hour ramen shop, get some food, have a good time. I was like, yeah, I'm down. You know, I'm only gonna have one birthday here in Japan. I was like, yeah, sure, I'm down. So most people decided to go too. And uh, before we went to the restaurant, we went to a convenience store. Those things are open 24 seven, no limit, no time limit to when you can buy alcohol. So Matt and Angus, being the Australians they are, decided to get more more drinks and they're like, hey Jerry, do you want a drink? And my drunk, my drunk dumbass said, give me the strongest drink they have. And Matt, now Matt, he is kind of a bit of a troll. So when he heard this, he was like, oh, I know what to get him. We'll get him a, a one cup fuck. That's what he called it, one cup fuck. Now the name of the thing is one cup sake, but he calls it a one cup fuck because it takes one cup to fuck you up. Really small jar of sake, but it's strong. Anyway, he's like, since it's your birthday, I'm not gonna let you do this alone. I will do it with you and we'll both get fucked up together. And I was just like, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> now Angus being the moral figurehead of this this group, he's just like Matt. You already know what happened last time. Don't do this. Don't do this to him. Don't do this to yourself. You already know this one cup fucks you up, and it's gonna be bad. And he's like, he has to try it at least once. And what better day than his birthday? So I chug that guy. He chugs his, and I'm like, you know, I think I'm still good, guys. That stuff was really bitter, really strong, but I think I'm good. Oh man, when we got to the restaurant, and I sat down. I'm like, oh my crap guys, I don't feel so good. And Matt's like, yeah, I don't feel that good either. I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom and of course, vomiting ensued. I'm just like, oh man, I feel terrible. All right, so I go back outside and right when I go outside, Matt, he runs into the bathroom and he's in there for a good 20 minutes. Once he gets out, I run to the bathroom. I'm in there for 20 minutes. Basically, me and him are hogging the only bathroom at this restaurant and I think about the I don't know, fourth time of me being in the bathroom, I'm just like, ugh. All right, I'm just gonna sit down for a minute. And then I heard the door open and there was a Japanese guy who just looked at me, he's like, and then he just like left and I was just like, huh, that was weird. That was weird. And then good guy Angus, he came into the bathroom. He picked me up and he's like, all right, Jerry, we're taking you home. You and Matt, we're, I'm gonna take you guys both home. And I was like, no, it's my birthday. I, uh, did, did everyone have fun? Did, did I ruin it for everyone or something? And he's like, no, no, everyone had a good time. They, they already all went home and it's just you and Matt here now. I was like, oh. So then we got out to the restaurant and I just see Matt just rolling in the floor back and forth and I guess the reason was because I was in the bathroom so long and he needed to use it and he, that was the only way he could control himself and so Angus is like Matt we gotta go and ah freaking good guy Angus he takes us back to to our dorm makes sure we get into our room make sure we get into bed and yeah that was basically my birthday in Japan <laughs> so yeah that's basically the end of story number two um uh, this all happened within the first semester. Uh, if I decide to do another video like this, I'll talk about stories more along the second semester. I even have some videos to show you guys. So yeah, that's basically it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. So, peace out. Yeah, I need to go through the...